Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna be going through the troubleshooting procedure I typically use when I uh, work on a cooler or freezer that is not uh, not cooling properly. Uh, today we're working on a walk-in cooler, so we're gonna go in and uh, figure out exactly what we got going on. For some reason, it's just at 50 degrees, and that's all we know right now. So we're inside the cooler, the fans are running. Both sides. I was actually here recently and had cleaned the uh, coil on the back of this thing, so I don't think it's an airflow issue at all. Um, what we're going to do is check the thermostat first. This particular unit is run by a thermostat right back here. So we're just going to slide the cover off. You can see we have two terminals in here. Now when we check across those two terminals, if the circuit is closed, we'll get a reading of zero volts. But if it's open, we'll get either 240 or 115, depending on what the voltage this cooler is. I think it, we would see 115 in this case. Here to here. And we're getting, whoops. Looks like we're getting nothing. 145 there. 122 there, so zero there. So we are getting, this switch right here is actually closed. We can also double check that by turning it up until we hear it click. There, I just heard it click. So now we'll get 115, yep, 122 across there. And nothing on this side and 120 on that side. So we know the thermostat is working. Let's turn that back to about uh, 35 where it was. So your condensing unit could be anywhere, could be up on the roof, could be in an attic. This particular one is in the basement. So you can see, first thing I'm noticing is this thing is not running at all. Um, it does have an air filter on the one side, which is nice. Go ahead and lift the coil. Coil is nice and clear. So I don't think we have an issue there. What we're going to want to do is access the port here and feel in on the compressor, see if it's hot. So this top cover right here has the defrost timer, and it's just a little electronic one. See, this is the indicator. It is currently not in a defrost. It only has two defrosts, once every uh, 12 hours, here and here. So currently not in a defrost, so it, that shouldn't be interrupting anything. Here's the compressor. First thing we can do is feel on it, and it does not feel hot, so I don't think it's been running or it's been trying to run. Um, next thing that we can feel is this heater. This is cold, so that actually suggests that there's no power to the condensing unit. A couple days ago, there was some power uh, surges in our area, so it's very possible this thing cycled on and off and maybe tripped a circuit breaker. So we're gonna check for power. Other thing that I'm noticing is this kind of oily area. It's not a real good sign to see oil like that. See right here, this dust is regular. This dust has oil in it. So that could mean that the system lost refrigerant and maybe one of these two pressure switches on the thing are interrupting the power. So it looks like our compressor voltage is 240 volts, so from here to here, we should be getting 240, but it seems like we're not getting anything. We do have power on our, right there, circuit, <laughs> or at least we did, we might not anymore. <laughs> um, that's why it's good to have your little wire protectors on there while you're poking around. <laughs> so you can see I shorted it from that terminal to the ground with the negative probe here. So not good, you wanna avoid doing that. Um, I flipped the breaker back on and checked this, it's actually still fine, but that can potentially fry little circuits like this. So yeah, watch out for that. Cooler fans and the new cooler. New cooler is seven and five right here and it's actually tripped. So before we turn that back on, we're gonna get our amp meter on here and see how many amps this cooler is drawing. We'll have to just flip the breaker and run over here. Locked 
200 amps is 43. This number right here says LRA 43. So if it draws 43 amps when we flip the breaker on, then we know that we have a locked rotor, which could be caused by either bad start components or um, or a bad compressor. Hopefully not a bad compressor. Hopefully it's just a bad start component, if anything. We're gonna go ahead and flip this on and try to rush over there. So, we were drawing 20 amps there, 27 amps. Um, and it kind of just made like a rattly noise. You can see the fan tried to turn and then I think it did trip the breaker again. Yep, that breaker's tripped again. So we have some sort of issue with the compressor and or the compressor start components. So next thing we're going to do is uh, access this side panel. I think it might be easier to take this whole shroud off. So the first thing we're going to check here is this start capacitor. pop this off and that gives us access to the terminals on here. Now sometimes these can have a charge so you're supposed to short them out and it looks like they don't. This one has a lead resistor soldered onto it. We're going to pull these terminals off of here. Sometimes when they're bad they'll have like a little blown hole through there. This one doesn't. We can look at the rating on here. It looks like this one's an 88 to 106 microfarad, 330 volt. So we'll just switch our meter over to microfarads. Hold this on here. And we're getting 101. That is right in the middle of our 88 and 106. So we're good to go right there not a bad capacitor. Next thing we can do is inspect the wiring inside the box here on the front. Now unfortunately that's not it's not so great. We've got a relay in here which potentially potentially that could be the problem but I'm kind of thinking not so we might take this off of here and then open up the side cover of the compressor and see how many ohms or if it's shorted to ground just one screw here and one screw up in this corner and then we can drop this whole assembly off and check the inspect the terminals here C is black run is red and S is start and then we've got a thermal cutoff switch so that potentially could be our problem so we're just going to check from here to here we're getting zero ohms so it seems like that switch is not cutting out so that's too bad <laughs> be nice if that's all it was next we're going to unplug our terminals off of the compressor and now we can check from each of these to ground. We don't want to have any really low numbers. These should be pretty high resistant number. Alright, so we've got five ohms to ground right there. That's not good. Seven and a half ohms to ground right there. And six and a half to ground right there. We go from the common to the run. We're getting two, ten, and eight. So I think this is ohming out fine actually. So from our common terminal terminal to our run terminal is where we're gonna find the lowest ohm rating if this thing is still good. So C to R. We've got 2.3 ohms. Next we're gonna check C to start and this one should be our next highest. This one's 8.2 ohms, and when we add 8.2 plus 2.0, what was it? So 8.2 plus 
we should have close to 11 ohms here, which we've got 10 and a half. So I just turned the power on of the unit, with these wires hanging out in space. You can see we're not uh, having any issue with the fan. You can actually check the power on these terminals very carefully. 248 from the start to the common, or from the, yeah, start to the common. And 248 from the R to the C, so I think we have a compressor. Right, we're gonna watch our amp draw again. You always want to test it with the cover on because uh, the pins inside the compressor can actually overheat if there's an electrical fault and that can melt the like epoxy they're in and then the pressure from the system will blast them out and supposedly they can come out at like a speed that will injure you so that's why they have those covers on the side. So unfortunately the compressor is bad. We're gonna go ahead and get one ordered as quickly as we can, and then uh, we'll come back in and install it. So that's it for now. So this thing doesn't have any low side port, so we're just pulling everything from the high side. So because it has a solenoid valve on the liquid line upstairs, we gotta make sure the power's on in the cooler so that that solenoid valve stays open while we're recovering the refrigerator. It needs to be calling for cooling upstairs so that that solenoid's open and the refrigerant can flow through the entire system in one unit. So basically how this one's set up, you can see it has a pressure switch here. When the temperature is met in the cooler, it closes the liquid line right here. The pressure switch shuts it off. So the cause of failure for this compressor was actually a brownout. They had partial voltage coming down the line for like a solid two hours or something. And it took out a bunch of stuff in the town. Relays, contactors, control boards, etc. Sensor just threads off and we'll pull that. It's even got a Schrader core in it. So when they, they come with this tag on here to designate which tube is actually the discharge tube. In this case it's this one. called a swage and swaging it and this will basically just make a female side which will braise here and then the other side will cut it to length and braise to our piece there so I've just got this uh, set up right here it's really important that you wear eye protection when you're doing any brazing but especially when you're brazing with uh, Something that's got flux, in my experience, it tends to pop and throw little bits of molten metal and molten, basically, glass at your face. So keep that in mind when you're doing any kind of steel to copper brazing. Go ahead and put our Teflon gasket right there. And we have the king valve already brazed. So we can drop that right here. That looks real nice. So this right here is the bad compressor. 
we check from the ground screw to the windings, you can see we have a dead short to ground. So each winding is giving us a toe into ground. You should never have continuity from ground to your pins. So we know that this compressor died from, well, most likely the brownout. There was partial voltage on the lines for like seven hours at this location. So likely what happened, the compressor was trying to run and the coil just overheated until it melted down internally. Let's look at how they compare to the brand new one. So this thing is brand new. You can check from ground to any terminal on here. And our meter is just going to read open, open lead. Thinks it's a capacitor. Let's just leave it in ohms. Open lead, open lead, open lead. So that's good. Now if we go from common to run, this should be our, our lowest one, which is 1.2. Then our start to common, it's five. So that means we're probably gonna have like eight here because when we add those up, seven or eight. Yep, nearly seven. So I guess more like seven. So that's how we. That's how you can ohm out a compressor to see whether or not it's good. Basically, if you have a dead short to ground, it's going to be bad, uh, no matter no matter what the ohms are on the coils, because the ohm ratings actually were coming out pretty well on both the bad one and the good one. Um, but we know this one's bad because we have a, a dead short to ground. I almost forgot to put in the new filter dryer, but remembered. So here's the electrical jumble, but it's actually pretty simple. We're just going to move all of these um, plugs over to the other side. Just be very intentional when you're moving them over to not change up where any of them are located. So I got a fresh jug of 404A and we're beginning to add. We've got 32 PSI in the system now. I'm going to go ahead and check everything for leaks using a digital leak detector. And then uh, we should be good to go. So all I had to do on that microcontroller was reset the parameters uh, which are listed down here for the cut in and cut out. For some reason those had been reset basically and uh, now we're good to go. Alright that's pretty much it. I don't normally leave old parts but this kind of tells the wiring diagram story so I'm going to leave this here. Um, we'll get rid of the old compressor but the other thing with this is it does have a relay that is probably good and a fast relay that's probably good. So in a pinch you could maybe use one of those parts to get you by until you get a, got a good part. But definitely worst case scenario as far as what was wrong with this thing with having a bad compressor. Uh, bummer. Improper voltages going to stuff is really not good. But pretty much uh, just putting it back together and we're done.